What is going on? Happy Monday morning. Today, we just finished up the gym. It's like 7.40 right now. Um, big week, man. Big week in the market. So it's going to be fun to watch. And I'm honestly not expecting to do very much. Um, we'll see. That could change, though. We get good setups and whatnot. So we'll see. Hopefully, we get some good setups, good, you know, action. But uh, headed home and market opens in like 50 minutes. So we shall see a lot of other stuff going on and uh, should set up this, this should, this is, you know, some people are saying this is one of the biggest weeks of the year, potentially. Yeah, it certainly could be. Um, we've seen how that goes though. A lot of times you get these type of like huge anticipations into these weeks of massive financial news and then and nothing comes of it. So we'll see and uh, check in later. Back in the saddle, CPI just came out. It came in right like where they expect it to come in. Um, honey is in the background just munching away right now. But it came in <laughs> where they expect it to come in and market's up another half a percent right now in pre-market here. It's pretty insane. I mean, people always talk about like, you know, you feel like these situations like, oh, I'm gonna miss it. You, I look around and look at all these charts. Like they're all making new highs of the year. Like, yeah, like they all are pushing and they all like look good. The thing is like, there's no, I'm gonna miss it. Like there will be plenty of opportunities down, up and left and right. Like it doesn't really matter. So it's just kind of cool. And I think it's funny when we think about it. Actually, don't say a little thing, look at this. <laughs> when you think about how many people were so fucking bearish the past six months, just getting blown the hell out right now. And maybe that's maybe that's just like a, a final blow off before a bigger move down or before a pull a substantial pullback or whatever, right? Who knows? But it just shows you, and it goes to show, and it just kind of continues to solidify that who the frick cares about where the market goes this week, next week, next month, making those predictions. I used to try to predict that shit. It just doesn't matter, you know. Have a setup, have a system, and do that. When this happens, you do this. When this happens, you do this, and that's really it. Um, and then you know build out a portfolio and go along for the ride. And that's just kind of what I'm doing. And, and it seems to be the most, I don't wanna say simple, but it's a fairly simple approach that works for me. So, you know, let's figure out what works for you if that's, you know, something that, you know, you're uh, interested in, right? So that's a rat. Spy's 436 right now. I mean, maybe it goes higher, but that's, we're, we're, we're getting up there, man. I mean, we're getting up there for sure. I was skeptical of this, but <laughs> ended up working out, so. Here's my downside setup on AMD, ends up breaking. The problem is that market's up, like, you know, Dow's up, Spy's up, Nas's up. So I didn't really love downside plays, but I played it with smaller size. I only took two contracts versus what I would take three um, on these and they freaking went nuts. So I got in at 259, it just sold my last contract at 310, freaking 15, 16, whatever, 18% trade. Boom, sold the first contract at like 11%. Might be it for me. Crazy enough, you know, market's up so much, but I think that I may just call it. And I'll usually never sell. Check out my freaking grays coming in, dude. I'm not even 25 and I'm getting grays. Um, I'll usually never sell on one candle push like that. The thing is, AMD's a $127 stock. The stock dropped one full dollar in one candle. And like, that's a freaking big move. I mean, you gotta take the gains on that. Uh, when that happens. So sometimes it works out that nice, does no ways, but I think that will probably do it. Unless something beautiful sets up later. I probably got other, I got, I got other shit to do today. So I might as well do that. Um, and these one and dones, man, have been doing really well. It was how it was, was for the month of May, which is my best month. And these one and dones have worked really nice. So we'll see if we can keep it going. Um, but so far the month of June is actually looking pretty good. We're kind of picking up where we left off in May. P&L wise, nothing insane. I just have been just a smidge sizing up. So, you know, if we finish the month strong, it'll be a bigger P&L month, which is great. Um, but we'll see. We're like almost halfway, we're about halfway in. So um, I'm feeling better for sure this past couple of days um, with the sizing. Another one. Sheesh. Ended up taking a second one here today, but it was well worth it. Take a look at that Tesla. Took the break of this. Fuck, I gotta wash that now. Took the break of this right here, popped it. High of the day line was right there. That's why I had it. Said, hey, we break the high of the day, we're gonna get a pop. We got a much bigger pop than I thought. And I sold into that 
first green candle. Tuesday in the books, market-wise, was a pretty solid day. I mean, things were up, then they were down, then they were back up. Um, not seeing a ton of insane follow-through in like the large cap tech, but just like overall, you know, the market just kind of keeps inching higher. Uh, I had two trades. We had one, which actually was a short on AMD, and it was on smaller size, because I honestly just didn't want to short this uptrend. Like we were just trending, we've been trending higher. AMD is just, it, it was down on the day at the time, but I was like, I don't want to short, you know, into an uptrend. So I played smaller size because the five minute chart setup that I was looking for was like textbook, it was beautiful. And it was the weakest stock. So I'm like, if there was a short on the day, it would be this. Took that, went like 20 something percent like this. Um, so I locked in at like 10 and the next uh, contract up around like 15, 18, something like that. Um, and that was that. And then I took a Tesla long, which was a monster. Um, that ended up breaking out to new high of the day. That thing was a beast. I don't know why I'm holding this. I don't even know what this is to be completely honest. But that was also sick. I also took that on smaller size because I'm like, okay, it's like mid freaking day. Like trading at noon is a terrible idea. Um, but they ended up working. So two smaller size trades ended up being really nice. Smaller size ends up being like kind of what I was sizing last month. So it was like a really solid, it was a solid day in last month's terms. But now it's this month, it's kind of like a smaller size for this month, just because I wasn't feeling great about the trades, um, but ended up working out. And again, that's just another reason why the charts, right? The charts are here, your head should be down here. You don't give a fuck about what your head says. It's the charts, the charts, the charts. Uh, and keeping it that way, I think is the most important. We talked about this before, I don't want to get this whole ramble, but like people in the whole bull bear bullshit stuff that's been going on this past year, like who literally gives a shit, it doesn't matter. Like I lost a fuck ton of money um, for myself over the past like two years, trying to predict where a stock or where the market would go over a period of time, a couple weeks, a couple months out. You can't do it. Everyone says it, you always hear that shit. You think you can do it. You might be right and you prove yourself right maybe a little bit here and there. And uh, then you forget about the times you were wrong. So you think you can do it, but you really can't. Uh, and then you get fucked, just absolutely obliterated. Like the bears who have been just saying, oh, I'm, not sh I'm shorting, I'm adding to my shorts this whole way up, they're getting fucked. It just, not, sorry, I mean, it just, that's what's happening. So you take that lesson, you take those lessons and you say, okay, how do I create a system or how do I create something that I can use where that won't hurt me or where I won't fall victim to those same mistakes? Let's try to figure out something that doesn't matter what the market does, right? Hence, portfolio, long-term. You have some short-term positioning in there, but even that, those are like hedges and those are also uh, positions that we are looking at like a macro view and saying, hey, Here's where I'd want to be. You know, I'd want to have a little exposure here. I want to have a little exposure here. However, the core of the portfolio, the core, the core, the core is going to be in a massive S&P or a bigger picture, total market, diversified dividend ETF. And that's what it is. And so outside of that, we got short-term day trades that we're playing off of a systematic strategy that we've been building out over the past multiple months, many months. It's honestly years in the making but it's been, we're, we're starting to see some of the fruits of the labor as of late because I've just been, it's, it's a much, a much, much bigger mindset shift that I've had. And it's much more about what do I see on the charts and eliminating what this mind or what the brain thinks is going to happen. And I've come to a much better spot where I literally do not care at all. Um, what the market does on a day to day. All I care about is will there be setups? And if I see them, great. If I don't, and even that, it doesn't fucking matter. Some days I don't drink. Simple as that. I don't know. That's what I'm doing. I don't know. That's how I'm feeling right now. Probably super loud with like dishwasher laundry going, but did you know that bully sticks are literally bull penis? She loves them. She loves them. She fucking does. I have no idea if I'm gonna listen to two videos. Video could be really long or it probably is really long already as it is, but it is now Thursday at 8.23 a.m. Central time. So Mark opens in about seven minutes. Um, I don't try to open. I don't give a shit. Uh, at least 10, 15 minutes, see how things look. And then we'll go from there. Um, stuff's gapping down, but dude, things have been resilient. So I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens. I've already had a good week. I don't need to force shit if there's nothing there. So if I see setups, I will take them. If I don't, I don't. Um, 
I don't know, maybe I'll make a video on this in the future, but so far I just kind of feel like ever since like, I don't know, I started running more and just being more disciplined in that area of my life, I just feel like other things have fallen into place way better. We'll see if that changes or how consistent that's gonna be, but it seems like, you know, it's been a really nice addition because it's helped so many other areas of my like day to day. Thursday, man, is uh, what's the wasn't a great day. Um, you know, market. Funny enough, we had a gap. We, we started off with a gap down, and then we essentially just rebounded in like the last bit of pre market, and then right at the open, like super fast across like Spy, Qs, Apple, Microsoft, the big names. Uh, other stuff's rad still, but whatever. Apple, Microsoft are my two favorite plays. They had the best charts. The problem was that they broke out like so fast right off the open. I don't trade the open. Uh, and then, so then I had, they had like marginal setups that looked decent. The only reason I said they looked decent, they look good on the five minute charts, which is why I took them. The problem was that they were just like really overextended on the one hour charts. And I'm like, you know, it could keep going and totally could, but like it also makes sense for pullback or consolidation. And so, I think on situations like this, this is a good example of a day where it was the biggest red day of the month, but not by a ton. It was like marginally the biggest red day of the month. I only had like three, I think, um, but still green on the month overall. And so, you know, just as long as like I had those three losers, like, you know, you respect the risk. It's not like it's the end of the world. Um, it just, they just didn't work. And looking back, you know, me, me next time seeing setups and things like that, it's probably a day where this camera looks fucked. It's probably a day where like, you don't have to trade it because like, it's not ideal. Like, even though like there's maybe look, it looks good at the five minute, like big picture, it's way overextended. Do you need to take that? Probably not, like you don't have to. So maybe it's a day where like, it's a one and done, like, eh, just not liking what I see, move on, take one L and that's it. Uh, but you know, it is what it is. The problem I'm having though is green days, they've been, They've been more and more than that. We've got a bigger uh, p and I guess, or a green p and uh, for the month so far. It's like halfway through. The only problem is that those red days end up being like three trades, whereas the green days are like one or two and done, you know? And it's like, well, you know, as long as your winners are bigger than your losers, fine. But that's going to accumulate more losers than you would think, even if you still had like a 75% green day month, if you have more trades on your red days, if that makes sense. So something I'm working through and, um, you know, we'll see, but I can't complain like necessarily. I, I actually technically did have uh, a green futures trade. So that was good. That made like a few bucks. So not as bad of a day, net, net, I guess, overall, um, big picture. So we'll see. Check out this lunch that we got oatmeal, some berries, two servings of oatmeal, and a premier protein. Pretty good. Um, I prefer these over the protein powders these days because they're just 10 times easier and they taste better. Okay, I feel like I'm sitting here like an idiot talking to myself. So I ended up actually taking one more trade because the setup was just picture perfect. It was too good to not take uh, on Microsoft and ended up making back um, a good chunk of the losses. So it was a red day because I had like three losses and one winner. Um, but you know, it's an example of again, staying on it because you know, staying on the risk because if you don't, you can't come back. Like the, the loss today was less than my win yesterday. Total in the day, I took one trade yesterday. So you see like how managing that risk, right? Is so important in the long game because you go and spiral and then you start taking dumb trades and start doing dumb shit. Even if it's like, oh, I'm gonna risk like, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. You start stacking this up. Now you have to make, you know, to make it back, it's so much more difficult. So that's like the biggest, the biggest takeaway that I'm thinking about, but you kind of see it play out. And I think you get discouraged because a day like today, the market just ripped freaking face, like ripped face, you know? And you say, oh, fuck man. Like I, you know, I had a red day, it sucks. But I think that that is like past me mindset. I think it should be past you as well, because what that what that is is like it's it's a hundred percent FOMO. It's a hundred. And why it's so bad is because it doesn't matter. Like if you are trading, 
okay? Not investing, not bullshitting around, fucking around, thinking you're gonna time the market. If you're trading, you have a plan, you have a strategy, you gotta set up, right? That you trade. You do, like, it, the market could go to freaking zero tomorrow or infinity. If I don't have a setup, it doesn't matter. We could go up, we could go down. If I have a setup, then it does matter. So like this whole like FOMO thing, I've been trying to do a better, I've done a much better job this past couple months for sure, but I've been trying to do a better job at least on the down days, you know, when you have drawdown, like, yo, know, it's totally, like it's totally fine. So that's kind of like where my head's at. Friday is in the books. The chest has been like the biggest, I feel like lagging point. I'll just, I'll put a shirt on because I feel like it's just gonna be distracting. But it's Friday. Um, finished the week slightly green, took out the profits. But it was shit because I finished with the biggest red day of the week um, on Friday. Dude, maybe I'm gonna say, I'm like, I mean, I gotta compete. Like, I was, I used to wanna compete in like, men's physique and shit like back in the day. Problem is that like now everyone's on gear and shit. And I mean, this is a fully natty physique, okay? This has just been fully natty the whole my whole life. I've never fucking done anything else uh, outside of like creatine. So I finished green, which is good, but I look back, too much shit. Too many trades, it's just, I gotta stop. So that's the plan for next week. I've been sizing up just a little bit, you know, so we're getting better. We got going in the background here, oh yeah. Um, but, Kind of disappointing, way to, disappointing to finish the week off. Some really good setups out there. Just like the follow through wasn't as good. There wasn't, I can't even say that. There was, I, I just took too many and I need to do a better job of dialing it in. Like I did last month of just kind of dialing it into the best one or two and then taking the cleanest, the tightest, the juiciest, set up versus like, oh, this looks pretty good. Like this is the best right now. Like, dude, if it's the best right now, but it's not clean, it's not tight, it's not the way that I want it. Sounds weird, but that's just the way that I want it. Um, and you don't have to take it. You don't have to take it. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Uh, so that's where we're at. Um, but, 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 I just checked everything. And despite taking out money last week, despite taking out money at the end of this week, all accounts are actually up, um, which is awesome. Um, from last week, you know, in terms of like, I took out like most of the profits. Like, I, if, I, if I make profits in the day trade accounts, I'll take. Honestly, there's no like, I don't have a rhyme or reason for what I take out because I'm still trading with the same sizing. Um, but I just slowly want to like, in, if I'm making money, I want to slowly just size or increase the portfolio. But it doesn't really matter. There's enough money in there that it's enough to trade if I want to, whatever. Uh, but the options accounts, the IRA, which I just put in a uh, swing trade on there, which is just like whatever on DUSL. So it's like a very small size, like 200 bucks in there. Uh, and then the Robinhood's up another couple hundred bucks. So, oh no, hey, you know, it ends up being good. This past week, we got some videos and we did some stuff talking about the um, Robinhood account. Past some live streams, if you want to check them out. You know, we kind of covered, you know, that account there. So I don't want to talk too much about it here. Make a separate video. I don't know, this video is long. I have no idea how I split this up because I'm doing it after the fact and I think I'm gonna take pieces throughout this video that are more trading focused and stock focused, make that its own video and then take more like the training focused stuff and make that its own video because there's just like 30 plus minutes of footage that I just need to cut it in half because it's too much. But if you're still here, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. There will be a bunch of, I just, I just came to me yesterday, the new title for this series. That will be released soon. I want to talk about that. Other videos I got planned. So that's, it's going to be good. We're going to have a good summer. It's going to be a good time. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.